Welcome to the Jelly Belly Candy Company Trail Tour. My name is Janelle and I'm your engineer and guide on your journey. We're going to have some fun today. We'll explore what goes into the magical and often complicated process of creating the 100 plus flavors of the original gourmet jelly bean. Before we jump into candy making, candy makers is a pretty cool machine. We want to share a little more about how our company came to be. Did you know that our company is family owned and operated? There are several members of the family working in the business. And you'll get to meet a few of them now. Welcome to Jolly Belly. Thank you for coming on the tour today. We are family owned and operated with the fourth, fifth, and sixth generations working in the business. Hi, I'm Bill Kelly. My cousin Herman Roll and I are fourth generation candy makers. I'm Herb Roll. My cousin and I share the same great grandmother. Hi, my name is Ryan Rowland Jr. Hi, I'm Ryan Rowland. My name is Mr. Rowland. I'm Lisa Rowland Rachel. I'm Trevor Parkinson. I'm Bill Parkinson. I'm Becky Joffer. I'm Andy Joffer. I'm Justin Joffer. I'm Chris Bowen. But it all started with Gustav Bowen. He settled in Belleville, Illinois. He was joined by his brother, Albert, who sold their candies from a horse drawn cart. Gustav's sons then entered the business, and in 1898, they formed their own candy company. Over the years, we've had multiple factory locations. Midland Park, New Jersey, Kansas City, Missouri, Brooklyn, New York, Rochester, New York. We opened these factories to meet local demand. In those days, it was much simpler to start a factory. When you think back in the 1800s, the transportation aspect was pretty incredible. Covered wagon, maybe train, um, didn't have trucks for cars. So they would they, they'd build a factory in the place so that they could take care of the regional area. Candy corn and milk cream candies carried our company through two world wars and the depression. In the 1960s, they decided that they needed to diversify our product line. So around 1965, we began making jelly beans. The original little jelly bean was called the Herman Golitz Mini Jelly Bean. It was different because it had a flavor in the center. Of course, it was smaller. In 1976, my dad received a phone call from a man named David Klein. He said, I know you make the best bean in the world, but I want to make it better. I want you to use real ingredients. They pumped up the flavors in the center of the bean using ingredients like coconut flakes, coffee, orange juice. Finally, and most importantly, he named them Jelly Belly Jelly Beans. We purchased the Jelly Belly trademark from David Klein and Cal Lee in 1980. Today, we make over 100 flavors of jelly beans. The Jelly Belly brand is sold in more than 80 countries around the world. Jelly Belly Candy Company has three factories. Fairfield, California, North Chicago, Hawaii. Our factory in Thailand makes candy for the rest of the world. We have strong ties in the Midwest. We have owned our factory down the road in North Chicago, Illinois, for over 100 years. Much of the candy you will see here today was made just 20 miles away. Today we have seven generations that have worked in the company. My grandfather worked in the company until his death in 1961. My father joined the company in 1923 and worked until his death in 1962. I joined the company in 1965 I'm still employed. It was just an incredible thing uh, to me to be able to watch it. And I hope you'll we'll watch it for many more years. I'm very excited about the family taking the company to work and running it and producing it. Over the years, the one constant that has driven our company is quality. We've always attempted to make all of our candies with the highest quality ingredients the highest quality of manufacturing methods. We use the best of the best. And really, in the long run, that's the reason why we have been successful today. 
Sit back, relax, and enjoy your tour of Jelly Belly. You've probably noticed the Jelly Belly art pieces we have all around our visitor center. Our private collection of art includes more than 60 pieces. We have an artist in residence, Kendra Cummings, who we commission to make these works of art. She places each theme by hand, and it can take around 75 to 100 hours to finish one piece. Each candy mosaic is made from approximately 10 to 12,000 Jelly Belly beans. <coughs> now our company was the first to make jelly beans. The earliest known reference to jelly beans that our archivist has found is from the Civil War era in 1861 in Boston. A man, na a man named William Scrap promoted the sending of jelly beans to soldiers in the Union Army. We didn't bring jelly beans to the market until 105 years later. Today, we make around 15 billion every year. Let us show you how jelly belly beans get their start. It all starts here. This is where the center of a jelly belly jelly bean begins. You know what they say, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Our kitchen is pretty toasty, and there's a reason why it's so warm. Candy makers create what's called a slurry. That's a hot liquid candy mixture made with water, sugar, corn syrup, and cornstarch. Each jelly belly bean might start out with the same four ingredients, but each flavor is unique with its own special secret recipe. Large kettles are filled with the slurry before candy makers carefully and precisely add flavors and colors to bring each individual flavor to life. For example, peach puree is added right to the kettle of slurry here. Real ingredients like this are used whenever possible to flavor and color what will become the center of the bean. For example, we use real blueberry puree for blueberry, real coffee for cappuccino, and real chocolate for chocolate pudding. The list goes on, as you can see. In many cases, additional flavor and color are added to create the most accurate flavor possible. The slurry mixes together with all this flavor and color. Before it moves on to the next step, candy makers ensure consistency between batches by testing small samples on boards like this one. When it's all said and done, they will have crafted 400 pounds of slurry in one kettle. That's enough for 200,000 centers, or nine trips to the top of the Empire State Building. That's a lot of jelly beans. To your left, you will see some of our old candy kettles and cooking equipment. With more than 100 years in the candy making business, we have a pretty large collection of equipment. Our heritage as candy makers is complemented by our heritage as innovators. We are known for groundbreaking flavor and technology. From out of bagging our depositing to printing the name on each of our beans, we find new ways to make the most out of technology. And speaking of groundbreaking flavor, we're always creating new flavors. Our newest flavor addition is Krispy Kreme Donut. Berry Cherry is still the most popular flavor with butter, popcorn, and licorice falling close behind. Regardless of flavor, all Jelly Belly Jelly Beans have one thing in common, and that's their signature shape. Here we'll see, we'll show you just how that shape gets to start. All that flavorful, hot liquid candy slurry is gravity fed downstairs and deposited into small, jelly bean shaped molds. But wait a minute, where did all those small indentations come from? Let's back up a minute and I'll show you. This machine, called a mogul, sends wooden trays through, dumping in cornstarch and leveling it off like flour in your baking cup. A metal plate called a mold is the positive impression of the candy shape. In this case, it's jelly beans. And in other cases, it's molds for candy corn, fruit shapes, hearts, Christmas trees, and even a giant tarantula for some special gummies you'll probably see later in the store. The mold stamps the impression into the cornstarch. A moment later, the liquid candy that came from upstairs in the kitchen is deposited into that impression, filling it to the top. And boom! The center of the jelly belly bean has taken shape. There are up to 1,320 jelly bean impressions per tray. Once they're filled, the trays holding the centers are stacked and taken to a heated dry room, where they'll rest overnight at more than 100 degrees before they're firm enough to move on to the next stage of the process. After a day or so of resting, the trays are put back into the mobile machine. 
the mogul tips the trays over, separating the Jelly Belly Jelly Bean centers from all that cornstarch. The cornstarch is then taken off to be used again later in more starch trays. The tray continues its journey through the mogul and is immediately reused for a new batch of Jelly Bean centers. As for the newly freed beans, well, their journey is far from over. There's a little bit of jostling, a steam bath to make them a bit sticky, a sugar shower to give them a layer so they don't all stick together, and finally, they're on their way to rest again. I want to call your attention to these one-of-a-kind fashions. Jelly Belly has been to a lot of places, like the White House and even outer space, and we've also been on the fashion runway. Through partnerships with the French Pastry School, Chicago Statue School Managed Culinary Program, and Candy Alley Stores, designers and students have spent hundreds of hours handcrafting couture dresses made with our packaging, Jelly Belly Jelly Beans, and confection. Fittingly, we call them Candy Couture. Overall, Jelly Belly Jelly Beans can take between 7 and 14 days from start to finish. There's a lot of resting in between the stages of the process. There's, a, there's also a lot of technique required. Skillful candy makers represent the science and art of their craft. We're going to see some of that up ahead on our tour. <laughs>
We are learning a lot about Jelly Belly beans today, but we also make more than 50 other everyday and seasonal confections such as gummy bears, candy corn, and Dutch mint. We even have a, look, a line of USDA certified organic jelly beans and fruit flavor snacks. Let's watch how the candies find their way home. Beans tumble around a bit, and as they do, are moved toward the back of this very large metal drum. There, two specially devised screens await them. The first is sized so that any candy that's too small to be the perfect jelly belly jelly bean falls through. The second screen allows only the perfect sizes through. As the beans tumble, they either fall through one of the grates, or if they're too large to fit, they're kicked into a container at the back of the drum. Those pieces are still perfectly tasty and will soon find your candy destiny fulfilled as belly flops. You'll find them in the store after the tour. The right size beans are ready to receive their logo. Grooves just the right size and shape to fit a jelly bean collect the beans as they feed in. A roller with white food coloring, similar to what makes marshmallows white, transfers the logo onto a sponge roller. The beans pass under the sponge roller and are lightly kissed with that logo. This printer can print 20,000 logos per minute. Individual flavors of Jelly Belly beans are loaded on this 100-foot-long conveyor. Beans travel through the conveyor system and fall into a spinning drum. All this tumbling mixes those delicious flavors together to form an assorted mix. Be it 49 flavors, 30, 20, sours, bean boozled, tropical, you name it. This is how we mix up all your favorite collections. Each mix and package size has its own calculation and ratio of flavors needed to ensure you end up with as many different flavors as possible in your bag. All those true to life flavors of Jelly Belly Jelly Beans are loaded in giant hands and lifted by forklift up to the tippy top. One of those giant containers holds about 1,700 pounds. Colorful Jelly Belly Beans are weighed and dropped into newly formed bags, which are then cut and sealed around the candy almost immediately. With hundreds of bags and boxes flowing out of here every minute, it takes a lot of knowledgeable people to keep it running. Jelly Belly machine operators and mechanics are constantly helping to modify, fix, and maintain these machines. And workers are busy making sure everything runs smoothly and is packaged and sent out properly. Let's take a look at the long journey a box takes to ship out to stores near you. That's a long journey for such a tiny bean. Just sit on it, just on its journey through our factory. It's traveled further than we will on the Jelly Belly Express today. Well, folks, some may say we're in the home stretch now, but I say we're on to bigger and better things. Although we can't eat these giant jelly beans, and trust me, I'm bad, did you know that if the 15 billion jelly belly jelly beans we make each year were laid end to end, they would circle the earth more than five times? And up, up here on your left are some of the hardest working jelly beans in the business. Grab a photo, They're, they aren't shy. This is our jelly belly incline dance. If you order anything from our website, jellybelly.com, all orders are processed, pulled, and shipped to all 50 states this from right here. Did you enjoy your tour? Are you ready for some candy? Yes. yes. On the count of three, I want everyone to spread Jelly Belly as loud as you can. One, two, three. Jelly Belly! <laughs> All right, I ask that you please remain seated until the train comes to a complete stop and exit off to the left side only. Make sure you have not left any personal belongings on the train. Again, my name is Danielle, and I hope you enjoyed your ride on the Jelly Belly Express. 
If you are on social media, I hope you take a moment to like our page on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Pinterest, and subscribe to YouTube. Have a, have a sweet day.